Now their handyman gets to actually work on the property. Their cleaners are actually cleaning the properties. Their cleaners are not getting mad that they go back and put the trash bags in the trunk. We've, we've heard horror stories. We've heard a lot of people lose retention for their employees because they're doing tasks that weren't there, which is the trash. So we talk about like, you know, I, I, sometimes I bring up like the three R's, which is like retention, revenue, and recruiting. And with us, we're helping you recruit more people and keep retention of your employees. And you're going to bring in more revenue because you guys can not be focusing on the trash and go get more properties. Welcome to Short-Term Rental Solutions, a show for hosts and property managers looking to overcome obstacles, maximize revenue, and optimize their short-term rental business by learning from the innovators who are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Short Term Rental Solutions Show. I'm your host, Christiane Crump, and today we're lucky because we are going to be talking about a universal problem that any short term rental, whether you're an individual host or a property manager, this is an issue that you have to deal with and have to come up with a system and a solution for, and that is trash and waste management. And so we have here Alex Shapiro with Can Monkey joining us today, and we're going to be talking trash, which I'm sorry, that's probably so cliche. Everyone probably says that when they talk with you and and have you on their shows. But yeah, Alex, will you just take a second and introduce yourself and kind of what in the world brought you to a business where you deal with other people's trash? Well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. It really means a lot. And I always love being able to talk about Cam Monkey. So, you know, stop me if I speak too much. But, you know, this was by accident, in a way, you know, my business partner started Cam Monkey for a small area in Scottsdale, Arizona, for homeowners. And after a year, back in 2018, and after a year or so, it was kind of it's a brand new concept. We were the first to actually create the trash to curb category. So there's companies that have done it before, maybe like you know, the neighbor next door, but no real businesses that actually trademark, copyright, you know, this actual business which was kind of crazy to us, even to me and my business partner too, when he was looking for a service for himself in his neighborhood, there was no service. So that's how he started it. My background was in title and escrow, working with investors, being in Scottsdale, Arizona, you know, after the whole market crash back in, you know, you know, 20, 2008, 2009, we were one of the first markets to come back. And with that, with my being in the title and escrow, I worked with a lot of hedge funds, a lot of investors. And so a lot of these people were coming in, buying these properties, you know, 75 cents, 60 cents on the dollar, you know, rehabbing them. And so I was there the whole thing. So fast forward now, when my business partner came to me about Cam Monkey, at first I was kind of laughing at him. I was like, that's a silly idea. I don't think I'd pay anyone to take my cans to the curb. And it was just one of those drips that, you know, I think later that day or the next day, my wife told me to take the cans to the curb. I said, I'll do it after the football game. I didn't do it. The next morning I miss, like so many people around the world. And I was like, maybe he's on to something. And I had a lunch with one of my clients that was converting some long-term rentals into short-term rentals, STRs. And that was the first time in 2018 I actually heard STRs in a conversation. And his phone was blowing up and the main point was the trash cans. And that's where I, was like, I had my aha moment. And I said, I actually know a guy that has a company that can take your cans to the curb for you. He goes, dude, I would pay $100 a month for that service. Knowing the service was a lot less than that, my buddy was offering. I was thinking I can make you know some money in the middle. And, and I was like, all right, like right, I'll broker a deal. So that was kind of like my entry in. And I did not think that it was going to come to this point. You know, It was just one of those things that I thought I'd make an introduction, have him kind of take on the operations. I would just be a marketing sales guy for him. And then the world shut down in mid, you know, 2020, you know, pandemic. And I got let go of my job in corporate America and was kind of in this crossroads where I could go take my skills and go to another Fortune 500 or big company and help them grow. Or I could take this time and put some effort, more effort into Cam Monkey and see what I can make it. And I'm really glad I did because that was really when I went all in in 2020 is when we really started seeing the needle sh uh, shift. You know, we were probably around 300 properties at the pandemic, lost probably a hundred, got them all back like three weeks later because we realized that, you know, nothing was really happening yet in our world. People were still going to each other, you know, people needed pools or whatever it was. And so we finished that year, probably around 500 properties in Arizona. And I wanted to scale to a thousand to 1500 to more and it just seemed like it'd be really hard to do that just in one spot. And so I was thinking, well, if 
people need us in Arizona. Maybe they need us in Park City. Maybe they need us in Austin. So that's where my background and what I brought to Cam Monkey was just the, the the delusionally optimistic thinking of why not us and why not can we not take this further and why not go this route and why not would just be a, a question I'd ask a lot and and I would be told that you couldn't do it and then I love that so I would try to go do it and unbeknownst to me like it would kind of work out a little bit, you know, and more and more people needed this issue. So like, you know, you saying it now, it's a big issue at the time. I didn't know. Vacation rental wasn't my world. Trash is not my world. Like technology is not my world. I'm just a sales guy that's a hustler and I like connecting the dots, making win-wins. And that's that's what I brought to the table. And, and now we have a business that is, you know, growing and helping a lot of individuals, not just short-term rental hosts and owners, but elderly, disabled, single moms, uh, single dads, people who just need extra help with that tedious task every week, taking the cans to the curb and back. Yeah, that's so awesome. And yeah, it's so much more than just short-term rentals, but at the same time, this is a universal need and issue for short-term rental operators. And especially if you're remote managing, how are you going to make sure that, that that gets taken care of? And so having a system and a person that's more reliable than just like your next door neighbor saying, oh yeah, don't worry, I'll grab your cans and take them to the curb. That's a really big deal. And so, I mean, here you are, you've thought more about this problem than probably 99.99% of the population out there. You yeah. know, for a lot of us, it's like an afterthought. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, we got to figure out how we're going to take care of, of getting the cans to the curb and back and whatnot. Like, what are some things that you didn't even realize kind of came along with this before you started Can Monkey and we're working on this? Like what, I mean, we don't really think about it, but what should we be thinking about? So I, I, I joke that there's no one that knows more about vacation rental trash solutions than myself. And I've obsessed over over five years. So I appreciate you saying that. And, and really like, I didn't realize. So I think when outside the world, they think it's a really simple job. It's taking the can to the curb and back on a certain day. Like how can you mess that up? Right. Um, and right, I mean, there's sometimes that like that it's so easy that you it's easy. But what we are is we're glorified instruction takers. If we don't have all the instructions, and you know, sometimes we're we're left to guessing, like you know, where the cans are located, or if you don't give us a gate code or a lockbox, or like these are things that over time, like we didn't realize that we would have to overcome. We thought it would just be taking the cans to the curb and back, you know. So when we scaled to Park City. You know, 99% of the properties in Arizona at that time before we scaled were all on the side of the house. When we got to Park City, like 99% of them were on the garage. So now we're like, oh my gosh, now we have a garage code. Now, how are people going to trust that we're going in the garage? What if there's like ski equipment or whatever? And so other things kind of, you know, pop up and then, you know, you deal with those and you kind of pass them. And now we've been in Park City four years, no issues. And and what we also uh, implemented is certain things for ourselves that we needed to kind of make sure that the job was done. Because when I wasn't taking the cans to the curb and I started outsourcing it to another can runner, I had no idea if they're doing the job. So I made them take pictures and send them to me. And so we built a whole application and technology that really was for us. And then what I found is that my clients would like this transparency too. So to your point, like even if you're using the neighbor next door, do you know the can really got taken to the curb? Do you know if they brought it back? Did they forget? Did that kid next door, you know, go out on Friday night and, you know, forget to do it or whatever it is. And with us, we would always get called for issues that were maybe issues, like the fact that we took the can to the curb and took it back like we should have. But what happened is that cleaners came that same day the uh, guests left and they filled it right back up. So now we're getting a call saying, you guys never came. And we're like, what do you mean we didn't come? We were there. They're like, why is there trash in here? Did you have someone leave yesterday or today? Oh, actually, yes, the cleaners came. Okay, thank you. So some of those things that it was like our word against their word. And, you know, we were not going to call our clients liars. So we just needed a little bit more proof. So this is where the photos came in. And that now was nothing that we ever thought about. But that now is really one of our biggest saviors because um, not just that we needed to make sure the job was done. Our clients want to verify it too. And so we're, I'm coining this word, um, we're giving you trash parency. Instead of transparency, you get trash parency. All your properties, whether it's one or a hundred, you can have all the timestamp photos, all the geolocations, everything on uh, your portfolio regarding the trash, you'll have all that accessible to you, that data. And that's nothing that I thought we were going to need coming in here. I just thought it was going to be 
us take the cancer curve, a small little area in Scottsdale, maybe get some college kids. I don't know. Um, but I think that was really good not having that kind of thought process because we were able to develop it while we, we grew. Well, yeah. And I'm thinking of properties that may have kind of a, a little bit layer of complexity where, I mean, maybe there's bears in the area. Maybe there's like, they need to have a solution that makes sure they don't get rodents or whatever, mm -hmm. or have like a really long driveway or mm -hmm. the snow in the winter, or like mm -hmm. all these other things. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had to tackle those types of problems. Yeah, in Sedona, there's javelinas, there's raccoons in some mar uh, markets, there's, you know, bears in other markets. So like in Sedona, where these javelinas are, they're like wild pigs almost. Mm -hmm. You know, they knock over trash cans and eat all the trash. But what we started doing is we found a, like, trash can clip that you clip down and it kind of locks the, the trash can lid down. So we found these and I think actually a client told us about it. So now we bought a bunch of those. So now when we have people who have, you know, issues with javelinas, we're able to say, hey, we're going to bring these clips to you and we don't even charge them for us. It's one of the things that, you know, we provide to make sure that, you know, they keep using our service. And also it's not hindering our can runners when they go there, there's trash all over the place and hindering the neighbors and hindering the guests, whatever it is. So we're really a stakeholder in our client's business. We'd like to think that we're, you know, a partner with them and all we want to do is handle the trash. And so if we can make our jobs easier, it's making their jobs easier. And if they can go get more properties and go market to more people who need their service, then when they add those properties on their portfolio, they're going to add camel key on. So we're really, as much as our service is really simple, uh, a lot of idiosyncrasies that go into it. And we just try to make sure that we have an answer or solution for each one of those problems that could arise. And we don't re reinvent the wheel. Something happens in this market and can we take that and use it in this market? Yeah, we can. Cool. So it's, you know, we've seen it all uh, in some aspects and we've overcome most of the issues that we've seen and we have a solution now. And with that, we're able to provide the solutions for people who have those problems. That's great. Well, and it really sounds like, you know, you've taken what's, a very basic issue and really brought it to the 21st century. I mean, even with the technology and stuff, go a little bit deeper on that. What kind of technological solutions? I mean, most people would think technology, garbage, yeah. really? But it's amazing. Tell us about it. So yeah, it's, I have a, a, a phenomenal CTO. And whenever I talk to people, they think that I know technology. And I'm like, you're speaking Spanish to me. Uh, I need to get my, my Spencer over here. And so he is uh, a wizard. He, he built this whole uh, application for us from scratch. And uh, it's really like as much as I'm in the short term rental industry, I'm also in the gig economy. So as much as like the vacation rental clients paid me for this service, I have can runners, you know, they're working with Uber Eats, Grubhub, Instacart, and they use CanMonkey. So I'm now competing with Instacart and Grubhub and, and Uber Eats on like a shoestring budget, you know, bootstrap. And our our app is matched up to those. So we have like the geolocations, we have like anything that an application would have with Uber Eats. Like we, I, I copy from all, steal from none. Uh, and if something's already out there and we can take it or use our API to connect with a, a company or another application out there and, and use their, you know, uh, information or use their, you know, technology, we'll do that. And that's what Spencer has really done. He built a, our application, but then brought in other application tools that we could utilize, like a, a company called, or it's a, tech called here, which is like the Google, like, you know, maps, you know, how to map around or go to drive in the GPS, whatever. Like, I don't even know, but it's in our application and it looks like we built it, but it's, it's here. It's another company that we're able to connect the API. So that right there, like in the beginning, it was like our technology was using Slack. Then they had to use their own camera for their phone. And they had to use like their, they had to use a company called Road Warrior, which is a, an app that we use off the, off the, like the Apple store. And then they had to use like a text message to, you know, so they were using four different applications to, to work with us in the very beginning. And now, and they were also like saying like, is this a real job? Are you guys even real? Like, I don't, I'm going off the Craigslist app. Like, what is this? Now we're on the Apple store. Now we're on Google play. It gives us a little bit more like validation that we're real. It makes people like can runners understand that like, we're real. In the beginning, we were paying our can runners like through Zelle. And then Zelle maxed you out at like 27. So we have 550 active can runners that we pay every week. So we can't use Zelle. What do we do now? Well, there's a company called GigWage. GigWage pays GigWage. So like, there's a lot of things that we're able to utilize that it looks like it's coming from us from that semester, but we're just partnering with other tech companies that have built a solution that is needed. So our app is pr proprietary to ourselves. 
but we still partner with other companies to help us still scale because we are you know still bootstrapped and we're still you know a startup. Um, but that's been able to help us. And there's even companies now that we found that are providing similar services that we provide. You know, some call it competitors. But I look at an abundance mindset, and I ask them like, "What technology are you using? Like, do you need technology?" So now maybe there's another you know avenue down the road where I can even sell my application to other people that providing a service like mine that can get the same technology. And that's how what we're at now, which is not what we thought in the beginning of what we we're going to be, but it's now like we we are legit. You know, it's it's cool to say that. People are finding us on the Apple Store and Google Play, and people are leaving Instacart to come to us because they're getting consistent and persistent pay, getting paid three to you know three times a week, getting the same routes every week. They know that they're going to work two, three hours on Tuesday and Thursday, and make an extra two fifty a week, extra thousand dollars a month. For some people, that's huge. I have millions of not millions, I have a lot of stories from you know can runners, you know, thanking us, giving them an opportunity, what they use their money for, what it helped for. And that was never a thought process of starting a business to help other people. It was always a business to start helping other people, but it wasn't like the can runner aspect. So that's been a nice surprise. And, you know, like I said, I create win-wins. And so I never really thought it'd be a win-win where I'm helping people make money and also help people with a, a solution of taking their cans to the curb and back. But it just, I just blend them both together. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Well, and even technology-wise, the solution of, like a sensor that can detect when your can is full. Mm -hmm. That's so yeah. cool. And that, that again is another company that created that, you know? So like, once again, like we don't have to recreate the wheel all the time. If there's another company out there that has a sensor or has, you know, something out there that, you know, we can utilize into our business, we're going to do that. You know, I'm going to make a partnership with them. They like the fact that now I'm bringing their business to my thousands of clients and they, my clients like that I'm giving them a sensor. So it's a win-win again. And so we, we've been able to partner with a lot of companies, even the can cleaning, you know, business side of it. You know, we outsource that to people who actually have can cleaning, you know, trucks that can actually provide that service and not get, you know, the, the dirty water all over the place because they're using a hose or whatever it is. So we try to bring a professionalism to everything we do and everyone that partners with us, whether it's can runners or local general removal companies or can cleaning, we bring a professionalism to that. And we basically, like I said, we're the one-stop shop for our clients. So on the vacation rental side, if they need anything done, they just call Cam Monkey and we'll get it done. Either if it's us or not, they don't know any difference, but we're making sure that it gets done for them. And they just say, okay, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And it's just a one-stop shop. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. So, you know, you guys have grown quite a bit since your initial launch in Arizona. What, what markets do you guys serve now? We're in 18 states, over 80 cities currently. It's kind of hard to like name them all off, but right, the, right. The, for like the, for the most part, like there's not really a market that is like you know made for short-term rental that we're not in yet. And people always ask like, where's the next market you're going to? And the answer is like, I don't know. The next market I go to is the company that needs me. We can get into a new market with 20 to 25 properties uh, to get on a route, and not is it always just one company? It could be three companies with 10 properties each. It could be two companies with 20 each. It could be one company with 50 properties. Any, everyone and anyone has this you know, need. And so if we're able to get their uh, properties, put them in our application, it builds a route for us on the right days. We're able to see if it fits in our algorithm. If it, if it fits in our algorithm, we can get started within three to four business days, finding a can runner, getting them on the route, getting going. And once we have a route going, if you have one property, we're able to add it on and just make our route a little bit more condensed. But currently right now, we have over 4,000 properties that are active on our uh, application, and we have over 5,500 properties on the application that we're just still waiting to get markets going in some areas because some are a little bit harder than others. But at the same time, we're able, like a lot of, like, a lot of markets that we're able to get in are the ones that have like a lot of short-term rentals in. So like, so, but there's some markets like like Myrtle Beach or, you know, some of these ones that like we have like, you know, maybe 15, 20, or like Evergreen in, in uh, Colorado. Vale and call there's a, some markets that we have probably 15 20 properties in but we just can't get started because they're mountains they're really scattered away maybe they don't have canned to curb maybe they just need on a man trash removal instead that's another solution that we could provide but it's just not what you know we have it's a little bit different so i hate saying no to clients i always try to look into it at first and if i can't do it myself maybe give them another solution but we're the longer that we're you know my goal is just to stay in business for one more day, one more day. And now our runway is a little bit longer. There's light at the end of the tunnel. So we're now being not more methodical, but we're just trying to take care of the clients we have right now, get the routes a little bit more dense. And if a market makes sense, we can get in, we're doing it. But we're not, you know, 
we still got, we're running a business. I'm not in the business of losing money, but if there's still potential to grow in that market, we're going to get started. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, as you think about the experiences that you've had with, you know, your runners and then also these customers, I don't know, can you think of some instances where you're like, man, it's so satisfying knowing that I made a difference. You know, I could see that that had an impact. One, one camera we had, she's been with us for, I have a couple stories. But one camera there was us for like three years in the Scottsdale market. Her company, she's a W-2 employee for another company. And she was bored during the day because they went remote. And she started running cans with us. And she still runs cans with us, still has her W-2. She just never went back to the office. And she runs like three to four routes consistently. And she pays off her uh, mortgage, her HOA, and her car payment all from the money that she makes from Cam Monkey. And she's, she works like a full-time job with Camel Gam. I was like, why do you do this? And she's like, I love it. Like I, I'm on my phone. I used to get to my own thing. I know my route really well. And so I, I love that. I love that she was able to help pay off her, you know, pay down her mortgage, pay down like some other bills that she had. And, and I, I really appreciate that. There's another person that was working with us for a long time. And now she actually works in our headquarters full-time. So she went from being a can runner, working in the gig economy. And now she is a full-time employee helping us with bringing on can runners because who better would know about being a can runner and what they need than a can runner who's been doing it for two, three years. So I, I'm really, my background in the corporate America, you know, there's some things that didn't well, there's some, that, some things that didn't do well. I'm really big on like bringing within. Uh, so if there's people within my company that has helped us get to this point, that has helped us, you know, keep happy clients, I want to make sure that they, you know, feel that they can come in with the can monkey if there's an opportunity. And then on the client side, I had a, an elderly lady and, you know, tell us that if it wasn't for Cam Monkey, she would have had to sold, sell her house. You know, her husband had passed away. She was in her 80s. And the biggest issue was taking the cans to the curb every week. Her, her adult kids uh, didn't live in the state. And they were like, Mom, we, we need to move you. And the fact that they found Cam Monkey let her stay in the house that she had for 40 years with her husband. So a story like that, where I was, that was like in the very beginning where I was like, what? So that was like little stepping stones of things like I didn't think the service was really, like really that change your life. Like, so it's little things like that where it, I remember that in the back of my mind. So when I see comments on Facebook that say, oh my gosh, it's for lazy people, or I can't believe how lazy America has gotten, or who would need a service like this. I don't even get involved in it anymore because I know at the end of the day, I've heard so many stories of how we've been able to help people. Even people in the vacation rental industry have called me where we have a, pro we have a market in Minnesota and they're like, I wish you had this service in Minnesota because my my parents live up there during the uh, snow season. I always worry about them. Like, well, we are in Minnesota. We're in St. Paul. It's like, no way. We were able to add her property on and help her parents during this you know, snow season and make sure that they didn't fall down the hill uh, or that there's a slope of a, a driveway. So stories like that where we're able to make sure people feel safe and 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 happy and whatever, like they feel happy that they're making extra money. They feel safe that the task is getting you know eliminated from their duties. Those are wins. Uh, one more thing, my, my neighbor is actually a, a fire captain for Mesa, Arizona. And he told me, and in Mesa, there's 57, 55 and older communities. And he said like a high 80% of the calls they get for falls or for elderly falling for taking the trash cans to curb. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. I got, not great, but I got to take that marketing down because I need to reach out to these communities because this is something they need to know that there's a service to help them to eliminate falls. And so- I don't, I don't have any really, I have grandparents, but like it's, they don't have, there's never been a need. Like, you know, I never heard that. So when I was able to hear that from someone saying that that was in my own backyard, that, you know, people need this, we started reaching out to the, you know, HOAs and 55 and older communities and then started helping, you know, communities like that. So like, once again, like even for it, I don't know what the next thing is, but they'll tell me. So when I heard that story about the 55 and older communities, that light bulb went off, let's start marketing toward them. And then now that has been a new, you know, niche for us. So. You'll catch me talk about vacation rentals a lot because that is like our bread and butter, but there's so many different avenues that we're helping currently that I don't shed enough light on, but the vacation rental world is just, I, I love it. And it just, I feel like it's just, if someone needs a service, it's just a lot easier to give them that because they just, they understand the pain points. Sometimes even homeowners don't really understand it yet. So it just takes a little bit longer. Yeah. Well, for every short-term rental professional, there's always the analysis of, you know, what tasks should we keep in-house versus what tasks should we consider outsourcing and another service provider? And, you know, thinking about 
what is the most value per hour of the people on your team? Mm. You know, is it running around making sure that all of the trash cans for your units are out? If that's not the best place that you could be utilizing that person during that time, I mean, this is where you reach out to CanMonkey and see if the service is available or if it could be made available to, you know, within your area. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, do you mind sharing with us? What do you guys charge per unit, Tyler? That was a huge point that you just made. And that is one of my biggest hurdles I have to make because I'll, I'll tell you, we start at $49 a month per property okay. for one track, one recycling can. But to your point, well, I'll talk to someone and they're like, oh, we already have it taken care of. Or, you know, I'm like, oh, who's doing it? It's like their handyman. They're paying like $50 an hour or their operations manager or it's them. And, or they don't, it's not a documented, you know, expense in their PL. So I'll ask them, well, what do you, what do you spend last month on this? Like, well, I don't know, but I called 1 800 junk for one weekend. They, it was $400. Like, you spent $400 one weekend for one property. I was like, that would take care of like 10 properties, you know, eight properties with us so we we try to understand like what are they paying right now so we can kind of help in the aspect but they don't really know it's not really documented so that's what we help them do is bring that you know expense show them what they're actually spending in most cases they actually save a lot of money because now their handyman gets to actually work on property their cleaners are actually cleaning the properties their cleaners are not getting mad that they go back and put the trash bags in the trunk we've, we've heard horror stories we've heard a lot of people lose retention for their employees because they're doing tasks that weren't there, which is the trash. So we talk about like, you know, I, I, sometimes I bring up like the three R's, which is like retention, revenue, and recruiting. And with us, we're helping you recruit more people and keep retention of your employees. And you're going to bring in more revenue because you guys can not be focusing on the trash and go get more properties. So we really focus on, you know, really, like I said, being a business you know, partner of our clients and just managing the trash, showing them the expense, showing them what they're spending. And sometimes even saving the money because if we're taking the cans to the curb and back consistently, sometimes the trash doesn't pile up because it's consistently going out. What we find is you miss one week, it piles up a little bit more, and the next week's a little bit bigger, and now you're left with an issue. But if you're getting it consistently, taken back and forth for the most part, you're fine. But some people do have those problem child properties that sleep 12, 16 people that it's you know inevitable you're always going to have. And in those cases, we actually have our on-demand trash removal that can come and remove those trash on a, the departure date or arrival date of your guests. Hmm, that's perfect. So do you have like, I don't know if you have it or maybe in the works or something on the roadmap, but the ability to integrate with some property management software. So you know exactly when that guest is checking out and it just like automates the scheduling of making sure, even though it's not when your municipal pickup is for your city, you know, mm -hmm. you can still have someone that will come take care of that trash. So if it's a same day turn or whatever, you know that the arriving guests aren't going to find trash cans full of garbage already. A thousand, yes. So we've already integrated with a couple of different companies. So that's what's great about having our own technologies that now we have our own API. We're able to connect with these other companies. Uh, we just partner with like Airbnb with a hospital. So they're able to uh, give us their checkouts. So any properties that, you know, connect with or any clients of ours that have properties on Airbnb, which they all do, you know, we were able to get their checkout check-in days. You know, we talked with other companies and, you know, we're with Guesty as well. So like we're, we're getting that process of partnering with some of these other companies to just make the whole process even more streamlined. And then once again, this was never like, we didn't, I didn't know that even building the technology would even have this capability. So a lot of the stuff we just built for ourselves. And then it came into like, do you have an API? Do we have an API CTO? They're like, yeah, we do. Okay, cool. Yeah, we do. So like a lot of these conversations are now coming up now where, cause we are tech. And so we started off as like a vacation rental trash solutions company. And what we are now is a logistical technology company. And that's what we're, we're growing into. And so with that, our technology is really taking you know, hold. It's just a matter of time that we're going to be partnered with a bunch of PMS systems. And, and that way we can you know, be connected with every client. So what we've also found is currently we have over 1,500 individual clients that pay us every month for our service. And out of those 1500, they could be using a bunch of different PMSs. You know, it doesn't, it's not like maybe 25% use Streamline, 25% use, you know, host, whatever it is, like there could be done, you know, but they could all use CanMonkey. So that's where we kind of get a little, you know, you know, kind of who, do, not who do we partner with? I mean, we technically partner with everyone, but there's also like iCal. There's all other things that you can connect with to get the schedules, but that's exactly what we do. And we're doing that like in Orlando market where, some of these properties in Orlando, they don't have cans that take to the curb or back. There's like a little bench in the front of the house. 
that maybe fits three bags. So what we do is a departure and arrival. And, you know, the departure date is like two days away from the city coming or, you know, 48 hours. We'll go and remove all the trash bags and we just send the client a bill at the end of the week. And it's just a relationship that we have that we're, we have all their data and we just take care of it for them. Yeah, that's so great. Just one less thing to worry about, right? One less thing. That's all we're trying to do. <laughs> we're all about solutions. That is the name of the show here. Short-term mental solutions. So, yeah. Alex, I appreciate you coming on today and talking with us about trash and <laughs> waste management and how we can basically just not have to think about this and potentially outsource with CanMonkey. So tell us, if people are interested in learning more or connecting up with you and CanMonkey, how can people find you? CanMonkey.com is our website. On there, you'll find all of our, all of our information. Uh, you can see the markets that we're in. If you're you know, interested in you know, seeing if we could you know, service your, your market, if you have a little inquiry, just put in your information. We'll get right back to you within the same day with the answer of whether, whether we can put your property on a route today or tomorrow, or hey, give us a week or so, you know, depending on where we're at. Uh, but CanMonkey.com is the best. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram, uh, Alexander Shapiro. You know, reach out to me. I, I'm a wealth of knowledge in this you know, field. You know, sometimes I help people and we're not even helping them with Cam Monkey. I'm just helping them with my ideas and I'm totally cool with that. Like I, again, I'm an abundance mindset. I know if I can help you, then you might tell someone else. And you know, I, I, I'm all about giving. So please reach out. Even if you want to, and sometimes I find out people just want to reach out and pick my brain to make sure they're doing a good job. And, and that's fine with me too. So, you know, if you ever have any questions, anyone has questions about what their process is right now, what their solutions are, because what we found is everyone has a system or solution. Sometimes it's like 50 to 75% at best. And with KMonkey, we're like a 99.6% accuracy right now. And if we do make a mistake, that's why we had the on-demand trash removal. So one way or another, your cans will always be emptied, whether it's the city emptying them out for you, or if we had to come and do it because of a mistake. But one way or another, your cans will always be emptied with KMonkey. And I appreciate any you know person that has a question. And I appreciate this opportunity uh, having me on your show. and. It's, it's an honor. So thank you. Well, no problem. And you had a little special offer that you were willing to throw out to people who listen yep. to today's show or find you guys on STR Hub. Why don't you share with everybody what that is? If you go to camelkey.com and you're, you know, we're in the market of yours, just go to camelkey.com. When you sign up, put in free 30. Free 30 will give you free 30 days. Try it for free. If you hate it, you pay nothing. You know, if you love it, then cool. Keep it on. I'm not going to hate it. Now, found most people are on, they don't want to go back taking care of the trash. So 3.30, put it in there or put in, you know, short-term rental solutions, put something in there along the lines and we'll understand that it came from you. But yeah, free, give someone a free 30 days, try it out, you know, and if there's anything we could be doing better, let me know too. You know, like we're always, you know, we're always evolving. So yeah, any anyone that puts in there that they, your name or the company, whatever it is, we'll, we'll take care of them. All right. I'm sure we'll be able to connect those thoughts. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm sure that this conversation jogged a few thoughts in people's minds. And I don't know. I mean, we're going to wrap up recording here and I'm going to continue to prick your brain because you I, I can think of a couple of places. I would love some help with my garbage. So yes. yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for joining us on this week's episode. And like I said, I'm sure you learned something and maybe got a couple of wheels turning. And while we're on the topic here, if you haven't already, make sure you head over to strhub.com. We've got information about tons of different companies and solutions there to help you thrive in your short-term rental business. So like I said, head on over there, poke around, think about the things that, pain points that you maybe have in your business and areas in which you're trying to grow and improve. And there's lots of information there that can be helping you and support you in finding the solutions that you need to optimize your short-term rental business. So thanks again for joining us on this week's show and be sure to tune in next time. Where we'll be having another conversation with the innovators who are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry.